गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स आई एम हियर अगेन फॉर माय लेक्चर कोर्स ऑफ माय टुडेज टॉपिक लेक्चर इज एयरक्राफ्ट सिस्टम्स टुडे आई एम इन लेक्चर नंबर थ्री दिस कंसिस्ट ऑफ सिस्टम कॉन्सेप्ट्स एंड सब सिस्टम्स एज यू नो आई एम डॉक्टर वाई डी द्विवेदी professor from institute of aeronautical engineering hyderabad india i have started this aircraft system which is a part of the 6th semester aeronautical engineering student of institute of aeronautical engineering hyderabad this course is very important because this gives in detail a study about different systems which are used to make the aircraft fly safely and comfortably we can divide this system into electrical system avionic system hydraulic system engine system fuel system landing gear system mission system and so on in this process in my previous class i have discussed about the first vertical that is the airframe or structural system in airframe system and structural system i have discussed about the wing about the pylon about the fuselage and we have discussed that the wing consist of the major component is a spar most of the wings we have the two spar one is the front spar another is the rear spar front spar is the first and strongest part which is going from wing tip to wing root and it is mounted in the keelson of the fuselage where every hard point is to be fixed we know that in the wing itself we use the we fix the aero engines and aero engines are very powerful component this provides the locomotion for the aircraft the velocity is obtained the speed and maneuver is obtained by the help of the available engine power so the spars are the made very strong same way we have the stringers longerons bulkheads and so many other parts aerofoil shapes other things are there in the wing same way if you talk about the empennage that is the part of the aircraft if you see here in this the structural part consist of the main three parts this is the wing part wing just now i have told you this wing it is uh, spar is moving from here to here a very thick metallic uh, i section mostly or a c section from here to here it is moving and here is the keelson in the fuselage in this it is mounted so this is the front spar and another is the uh, rear spar which is also moving from here to here but this thickness and the size of this thing is smaller than the front one and this all are mounting here in between we have the aerofoil every section we have the aerofoil every foil inside this we have the fuse uh, this fuel tanks number of fuel tanks are here we have different controls this is primary control and secondary control we can see here the primary controls are ailerons flaps we have in the bigger aircraft like this we have the inboard flaps outboard flaps inboard aileron and outboard aileron so mostly outboard ailerons are very effective but also we have the inboard ailerons here also if a, any time the due to the flow circulation the ailerons may be flow may be separated so the effectiveness of this 
aileron will be null and void. To avoid that, we have a additional set of ailerons which are not at the tip but uh, somewhere at the middle here. Okay, so we have outboard, inboard ailerons, outboard and inboard flaps also. Inboard is just like here, it is inboard. Okay, so these things we have to see that it is working. So these are the wing configuration. Second is the very important structural area is the impress from here, this area. It is called impress area. We have here the, you can see the doors are here, rear door. We have the vertical fin. Here it is the rudder. We have the horizontal tail or horizontal stabilizer. And here this black color is the elevator. And here this is the aileron. So these are also made like a wing only. Everywhere we have the aerofoil and from here to here a spar is going from here to here. And here also we have the rear spar. There are number of doors access to see that inside any maintenance work we can perform. So we can open, we can do. There are some hydraulic jacks, hydraulic actuators. Those are working to operate the your rudder as well as there is a trim tab. These trim tabs are also operated by the help of the hydraulic or electrical system. Another part is the hydraulic, this uh, the horizontal tail. The horizontal tail is also used to stabilize the aircraft and there is an elevator. This elevator is used to make the pitching up and down. Okay, so these things and the fuselage we can divide into a number of parts. This is the front, it is the rear and this is the middle. In the middle, this you can see we have the engine. These engines are mounted on the both side of the wing. Here, it is not shown here, it is broken. So it is like this. You can see that another en engine is like this. Okay, so the wings and also th there are landing gears. One is here and two landing gears. So during landing, lot of socks, it is observing. So wing should be one of the toughest part of the aircraft. So wings are made in a, such a way that it should not fail at any type of loading, any type of uh, aircraft landing or any type of uh, weather condition, aircraft should be able to sustain in the good condition. Now today I am going to, okay, my discussion on the topic is, I will go with the revision, then introduction to aircraft systems. Aircraft vehicle system today I will be discussing. In the vehicle system, we have the flight control system, propulsion system, fuel system and hydraulic system. And you can see that in this system, the I have done the revision what I have explained in my previous class. And uh, today I am going to discuss aircraft vehicle system. And in this, we have this vertical here. This one, here we were having the aircraft structural system. This is the aircraft structural system okay or airframe system also okay so this we have already covered in my first lecture in this we have the wing this is the wing this is the your impetus and this is the your fuselage okay so th this i have already covered now i am in this second vertical or the second system of the aircraft that is the flight control system, propulsion system, fuel system and hydraulic system. And then here we have the navigation system. This is called the navigation system. And then we have here, this is the mission system. Okay. So mission system. So in this way, we have the different 
systems today we uh, i will touch upon the vehicle system and we will see that how this vehicle system is working okay so <clears throat> first i will talk about the flight control system what is the flight, uh, flight control system if you see this is the aircraft Okay, this is uh, I'm making one aircraft here. Maybe it may not be very accurate. Okay, however, I will just give some glimpse of all the controls. So here, here we have the tail. Okay, so just I'm showing the one side of the aircraft. This is here. You can say this is the impenes. This is the impenage. Here we have the, this is called vertical fin. Vertical fin. This is the horizontal tail. Horizontal tail or stabilizer. The stabilizer. Okay. Uh, this is the vertical fin or vertical stabilizer. Here we have the rudder. And here, if you see from here to here, this is the elevator. If you see here, we have here ailerons, both side. These are the ailerons. And here we have the flaps. This is the flaps. And here we have the leading edge devices, high lift devices and all. Slats, slots, and all. This is the slats. Here we have air brakes. So they are the air brakes. Okay, so why I am drawing this? Because I am going to talk about the flight control system. So, once I am talking about the flight control system, so how this flight is controlled? This, this flight is controlled. Here is the pilot. This is the pilot here. Okay. And he has to operate few, uh, okay, some sticks are here in the hand. And from here, foot, this has to use the feet. And here he has to use the hand. Okay. So if you want to roll the aircraft, rolling means one wing is going down and one wing is going up. Just you can see here. This is the aircraft. I am showing you. It is going like this. Now, pilot want to roll the aircraft. Like this. Pilot want to roll the aircraft like this. So, what he has to do? Or what she has to do? So, if you want to make roll down, it means the right wing down. It means left wing has to go up. It means what? The left side wing, we should have more lift. This should go upward. So, this will happen when this aileron of the right wing will go down like this. If it is going like this, it means this will produce more lift. This will produce and this will go upward. So, it will produce downward. So, this is up and down and aircraft will roll like this. So, if anyone is asking, to roll the aircraft, what pilot has to do? He has to just put a stick like this. So, by putting the stick towards the right side, the left wing aileron will go down, right wing aileron will go up, net deflection will be to from left to right, like this. So, aircraft will bank or roll towards the right. So, that is the concept of the rolling. Now, if you want to make the uh, yaw moment, left or right, it is called yaw. Yaw is with respect to the z axis. So, when this is your z axis and it is like this. So, if your aircraft is moving with respect to z axis, vertical axis, then it is called the yawing. So, how this yawing is achieved? Yawing is achieved by the rudder. Rudder is fitted on the 
vertical stabilizer behind this you can see here a small this part it is called the rudder so rudder is operated by the feet of the pilot both side he has to apply the rudder so if you want to make nose right so what you have to do you have to make a force in this direction left side like this so you have to deflect right you have to deflect the rudder right like this initially it is like this you have to deflect like this if you are deflecting like this the net aerodynamic force will be generating in this direction and it will try to make towards the right so in this way we can get left or right and if you want to left you make it left left like this so the force will be in this direction and your nose will go in this direction so we have covered the rolling and the yawing this rolling and yawing is called the lateral and directional control <coughs> but if we want to make longitudinal control means if it is there nose up and down if i want to make nose up and down what i have to do i have to make some forces here at the horizontal tail so this if you want to make nose down so lift should be upward like this so i have to make elevator down so if you want to make nose down elevator should be down if you want to make nose up elevator should be up so force will be downwards so it will make like this so in this way we can do the control i have given a basic concept on the control now i will same thing i will show you here the vehicle system and flight control here uh, i have shown here the primary flight control they are the roll pitch and yaw R the name of the control which is used for rolling is aileron ailerons pitch is by the elevator and y is by the rudder okay so these are the three controls which are making sure that aircraft is rolling aircraft is pitching and aircraft is yawing this you can see in this video that okay if you see here the condition that if you want to make pitch up and down you see here it is moving like this pitching up and down okay so here is a rudder so there use this you can see rolling by the ailerons so they are the ailerons ailerons they are here elevator and this is the rudder okay so this you can see how this motion of this thing is done so here it is showing the rudder and rudder is by the pedal if you see this aileron aileron is one cable is going and if one is going up another will go down and how this passes this everything is visible very much clearly okay so these all things you can take it and in this way you can see in this aircraft also how these things are moving so as and when you apply this stick stick force your aircraft will try to move in the particular direction as directed by the uh, control okay so in this way we can see that the aircraft is uh, doing the control as per the required condition okay hope this all things are very much clear by this diagram and so these are the primary control in aircrafts we have the secondary control also the high lift control and flap rounds and slats and the speed brakes so in the previous i have shown you that you see here it is called the flap round here these are the flap rounds it is acting as a elevator and the flap this so it can act as a flap it can 
एक तेज है एलिडाउन आल्सो सो दिस इज दिस यूज्ड इन बोइंग 7777 ओके एंड इफ यू सी हियर आल्सो दिस इज द होल फ्लैप दिस होल फ्लैप फ्रॉम हियर टू हियर इट इज डाउन ड्यूरिंग द लैंडिंग एंड द टेक ऑफ ड्यूरिंग द लैंडिंग ड्यूरिंग टेक ऑफ ड्यूरिंग टेक ऑफ वी यूज प्लस 15 डिग्री ऑफ फ्लैप बट ड्यूरिंग लैंडिंग वी यूज प्लस 25 डिग्री ऑफ फ्लैप व्हाट इज द रीजन बिहाइंड दिस बिकॉज ड्यूरिंग टेक ऑफ वी हैव सफिशिएंट स्पीड टू गेट द लिफ्ट वी नो दैट द लिफ्ट इज इक्वल टू half row v square s cl so this v square is sufficient so we have to do only 15 degree of flap deflection but during landing this we have to speed is not sufficient speed is coming down but aircraft to sustain so we have to increase this area so just you can see if you increase the more angle of this flap whole flaps your area is also increased you might have seen the birds how the birds are landing if you observe the birds so during the landing if you see this is the your bird these are the wings and here is the tail okay so these tails birds are increasing they will spread like this leaves during landing but without landing it will be like this okay for the birds it will be like this but as they are landing on some trees or something it will increase the area will be increase this much so this they want that this the amount of this thing should be more than their weight so in this way they are using a uh, high area during the landing you can see in the birds okay so here this you can see lot of this is the winglet it is shown here this is the winglet and here if you see these are the slight leading its slight and they are using during take off so that the high lift is generated as and when it is required even during landing also they can use this slides so the area of the required thing is increase so this is called the flight control and i have explained the two categories of flight control that is the primary flight control and the secondary flight control so in high lift control it is used the slides and all they are for high lift even the flaps are and flap rounds i have shown here it is a acting as flap as well as ailerons as and when they want the lift it will act as a flap and when they want as a control it can be deflected in the both sides in the, in the different direction uh, so one will go up another will go down it will act uh, as a aileron and speed breakers are also here this you can see here here this speed breakers are deflected so if they are deflected the aircraft speed during uh, flight will be reduced it is not used on the ground during flight this speed breakers are used they are also called the spoilers so these things are used in airbus boeing and all big passenger aircraft these things are particularly used <clears throat> in modern system we have nowadays fly by wire system we have seen this in the previous slide that in this uh, all the ropes pulleys links are here but nowadays this systems are avoided and so nowadays we use uh, the all modern aircrafts they use the fly by wire uh, system and it is here for airbus 320 it is shown here fly by wire system this you can see here that in fly by wire system what happens we are not linked mechanically they are all used the electrical signals electronics devices and by that the systems are moving so electrical controls elevators ailerons roll spoilers tail plane trim 
स्लाइड्स एंड फ्लैप्स स्पीड ब्रेक्स लिफ्ट डैम्पर्स एंड द ट्रिम्स दीज आइटम्स आर यूज प्योरली बाय द फ्लाई बाय वायर सिस्टम हाइड्रोलिक एक्चुएशन ऑफ द सर्फेसिस आर डन एंड देयर आर फ्यू मैकेनिकल ऑपरेटेड आल्सो जस्ट लाइक रडर टेल प्लेन ट्रिम दीज आर द रिवर्सनरी मोड ओके रिवर्सनरी मोड सो दिस रडर एंड द टेल प्लेन ट्रिम दीज आर यूज एज ए मैकेनिकल बट अदर सिस्टम्स लाइक एलिवेटर एलिडॉन रोल स्पॉयलर्स टेल प्लेन स्लैट्स एंड फ्लैप्स स्पीड ब्रेक्स दिस ऑल थिंग्स आर यूज एज ए हाइड्रोलिक सिस्टम ओके जस्ट नाउ यू कैन सी दैट वॉट एवर आई हैव डिस्कस्ड इट इज ऑल्सो मैं हियर दीज आर द विंग्स हियर दीज विंग्स हैव here just you can see the lift dampers they are also called the spoilers so they will reduce the lift it will be lifted upward then we have the roll spoilers here one mechanical devices if you see here so many devices are here in this okay this you can see here 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 these all things are lifted up as and when it is required okay so here uh, speed brakes then roll dampers here you have the trimming tail plane primary mode this is the trimming tail plane then we have the elevator here we have the rudder here vertical tail we have the flaps this is the inboard flaps this is the outboard flaps here is the aileron this is the outboard aileron here is the inboard aileron here and here we have the slats i have shown you in the previous just you can see this is the slat here this is the slat and this slat is shown there a very clearly this one these are the slats here so i okay, hope it is very much clear all the parts i have explained uh, this is the engines on both side these are the engines so these engines are i told you the before also they are fitted on top of the wing or under the wing okay so most of the thrust they are acting just you can see here this is the engine in this aircraft so the load of the engine and the thrust so vertically load and horizontally thrust all different types of forces rotating forces so many forces are acting on the inertial forces viscous forces and so many issues are there and all are sustained on the wing so wing is very important parameter and 90 to 95% of the lift is also produced by the wing itself now if you see here uh, how this fly by wire system works so it is shown in this diagram that near the control surfaces it may be ele elevator aileron or the rudder here just i am fixing here one control surfaces here it is fixed here so the fly by wire control and direct electrical link so here it goes to a actuator control electronics it is called ace and here from here a hydraulic power is fed to this servo or it is also called actuators so this rod will go up and down so as and when pilot will apply some signal here this signal will go by this and it will go to this valve and here lvdt is there this will extend retract or in this direction extend so angle of attack of this thing either will go like this or it can pull down so it will go like this or that like this as per the requirement your this vertical shaft will move the hydraulic jack will start moving the uh, control surfaces so this is the principle behind the uh, this uh, our fly by wire system these systems are mostly used on the aircraft nowadays all the fighters aircraft first started now all the passenger aircrafts all are having this type of system now i will talk about the propulsion system so what is the propulsion system actually this systems gives this 
system gives the thrust to the air vehicle. This thrust, this thrust will counter counter the drag of the aircraft during cruise during cruise flight and additional thrust is required additional thrust is required by the engine by the engine during different maneuvers different okay different maneuvers so we have to use the engine so now i am talking about the propulsion system and in this propulsion system we can divide this propulsion system into two categories one is the piston engine piston engine and another is the turbo engine okay so we have to discuss this thing propulsion means act of propelling it means it will try to propel it will give some motivation at this um, motion a locomotion of the aircraft and the engine is very much important to have any type of uh, flight so to propel to move forward so if you want here we have seen this one two and three engines are here and they all are the piston engine piston engine and they are the here this is the turbo engine In turbo engine, we have the turbo jet, turbo shaft, turbo shaft, turbo prop, turbo prop, turbo fan, and so on. Okay, but here we have we can divide this piston engine that is the two stroke engine four stroke engine but normally we don't use the two stroke engine so only four stroke are there and if you see here here we have axial your cylinders piston cylinders are in the axial format and here they are in the radial location so one two three four five six they all are in the radial and here they all are in the axial if you see the locomotion engine of uh, Cessna aircraft, they are in the axial form and these things are in the uh, radial form. But nowadays we don't use much heavier like the previously one. Only small aircrafts are used this type of engine. And how these things are working, I will discuss in this. Uh, first I will see uh, okay, how this uh, piston engines are working and then I will go for the further explanation i think you all know how this piston engines are working so it just i am drawing here one piston here we have the two walls here here is the cylinder oh over this is the cylinder and this is the piston here this is the piston this is the piston this is the cylinder okay so it is mounted here with a crankshaft and it is rotated here so here we have the four stroke means suction then compression then expansion then exhaust and in the if it is the uh, si engine we have here a spark plug this is the spark and if it is a ci engine we have the one injector a high pressure it will inject and they are the valves inlet valves and so on so 
how it is working initially we give the cranking of this engine so this piston will start moving from tdc this is called tdc and this is the bdc from tdc to bdc it start moving due to this motion this inlet valve is opened and this here fuel air will be mixture will be filled up and when it is reaching here both the valves will be closed it will compress and high pressure and high temperature fuel air mixture when it is reaching to the tdc a spark is given this spark will give a blast or this fuel will start burning and it will give power and so this power will try to push it down so in this way we can put this thing so power stroke and after that when it is going next this is the exhaust stroke this is the exhaust valve this exhaust valve will be open and your all the four cycle will complete so if we draw a pv diagram so it this is the p and this is the v so this is the suction this is the compression this is the ignition this is the expansion this is like this so so this is the 1 2 3 4 5 like this okay so and this area will give the your work done so this much work is done by the engine now i will discuss about the another system it is called propulsion system and here we have the turbo shaft engine it is called the gas generator here we have the here we have inlet from here your these are the compressor then we have the combustor or the burner and then we have here turbine so in this we have gas turbine engine and this i am going to discuss in this uh, slide this you can see here that how these things are happening first uh, we have different types of propulsion system one is here gas generator and this is called the a turbo jet then it is a here turbo prop this is the called prop turbo prop this is the turbo jet this is the turbo fan it is called turbo fan this here we have this pooling also low pressure compressor high pressure combustor combustor hpt lpt low pressure turbine height i here is a nozzle and from here you will get the jet so it is a turbo jet engine most of the fighter they use the turbo jet engine but all the nowadays big passenger aircraft they use the turbo fan engine you can see here how this turbo fan engine is working here it is a blue line it is showing that air is entering and if you see some part of air only this area your air is entering inside the engine where combustion here combustion is taking place in this area so only 20 to 30 percent of the total air is entering inside the engine and that is taking part in burning of the fuel and it will give a thrust and also rotation of this fan and this fan will suck the air and this air will mix here with the exhaust of this <coughs> and then this jet is here is the nozzle and this will give the thrust so this is the principle of your turbo fan engine so here you can see the one is a inlet two is a fan three is a compressor lp compressor four is hp compressor five here is the combustion chamber six is the hp turbine seven is lp turbine so this turbines are moving in at different speeds nowadays a gearbox is used and your aircraft will move at a different speed and with a different uh, conditions so the efficiency of the aircraft can be increased now i am talking about again for the vehicle systems these are few additional items which are 
used to fly, uh, used for the propulsion system. So we take some air from the engine. This you can see here. This is the engine here. And in this engine, we take some air, hot air from the compressor. And this is called the bleed air. This bleed air can be used for pressurization of the cabin, for anti-icing of the your glasses and your wings and all this hot air is used for the anti-icing system of the aircraft. Then electronic control units and for the cooling purpose, here is the engines, here is the auxiliary power unit. This auxiliary power units are also using the bleed air system. So the main air which is sucked from the main bleed air which is mostly sucked from the engine this air is trapped from the engine if you see here this bleed air is taken from somewhere here after three to four stages of the compressor this bleed air is trapped here also and here also everywhere we can trap from here Every turbo engine we used to take some air from after few stages of the compressor. This compressor is compressed air is hot and pressurized. So it can be used for the pressurization of the cabin here. Pressurization. Anti-icing, it is hot. It can be used for the glass cockpit. Here, if you see, this is your cockpit, your wings also. In the wing also ice may form this ice to remove this ice this hot air from engine is thrown here so this ice will melt and aircraft will be okay this is also used for ICS and the cooling system because in the very cool temperature we have to give some heat also and APU auxiliary power unit is also started by the help of bleed air of the engine now, <clears throat> some uh, block diagram how this bleed air is working and how anti-icing pressurization is done. Just now I have shown this diagram and it is now full scale how these things are working. If you see here, this is the left engine and this is the right engine of the aircraft. Left means pilot. You have to see all this direction from the pilot. You assume that you are the pilot and from there left side or right side. If it is the right side, it is the right. If it is the left side, it is the left. Okay. So, <clears throat> left engine and the right engine here. Here we have set of valves. Left engine anti-ice. You just see. The icing may take place in engine also. In the engine casing, your ice may form. That form also we have to remove. Then we have, we have to take the pressurization. Here we have taken some air. Air has gone for air conditioning here. And this will go for one line will go for the pressurization. And another will go for ECS. That is electronic control unit. Electronic control unit also a proper temperature and pressure has to be maintained for the working properly. It is wing icing, right wing icing, left wing icing. APU, auxiliary power unit, all the items which I have shown just now here, a proper a block diagram is shown here and this will give you how these systems are working and how the bleed air, ECS, anti-icing, precisation, all the systems, how they work and these all things are used from the bleed air of the engine. Bleed air of the turbo engine and the beauty of this thing is that we take only dry air dry air from compressor so fuel is not there so we are not wasting the fuel only the compressor compressed air is only taken it has got high pressure high pressure and high temperature so this high pressure and high temperature air is trapped from certain stages of the compressor and this is fed 
into the different systems like air conditioning, your APU, your anti-icing, de-icing and other parameters like engines, APU, precisation, ECS and other cooling systems we are able to make that system all right. Okay, next uh, part of the vehicle system is a fuel system and fuel system we will be discussing in detail. Here I have shown the normally the fuel is stored in the wings belly of the your fuselage from there this thing is uh, supplied. Uh, so provided a reply a reliable supply ground refueling is done ground refueling is also done in flight function fuel transfer it should perform engine it should feed the engine proper fuel fuel measurement should be there fuel management fuel jettisoning so what is the fuel jettisoning it is shown here in case of we are landing the aircraft and we the aircraft is not properly balanced okay because the fuel transfer is not taking place due to some reason a proportionate so one side of the wing will have heavier than the another that side will try to go down to avoid that there is a system in aircraft fuel tank the extra amount of the fuel will be jettisoned by itself it is an automated system especially during the landing aircraft is sensing the landing approach and accordingly it will balance the aircraft and it will fly accordingly so further i am going in detail about the aircraft fuel systems so in this operation and design requirement then we have aircraft level re requirements then we have airworthiness regulations so for the fuel system we should have these all things airworthiness is also very important and operator design what operator has given accordingly and aircraft should be labeled then tank location we have to fix our tank at the necessary locations fuel storage requirement then we have the system functions here refuel and defueling function engine and apu feed fuel transfer and jettisoning function quantity measurement and indication function fuel management and control system here we have the fluid mechanical functions pumps valves actuators sensors electronic and softwares avionics sensor and harness they are called the equipments they are called the system functionality and here is the fixed physical constant so these are the few basic concept of the fuel system and this we will be discussing in due course of time i think the last unit uh, unit number five is the for the fuel system and fuel control system that time we will be going uh, full discussion so here uh, i am this is the reference where I have taken this diagram and iron reference. This is iron Moir and Allen Seabridge aircraft systems, mechanical, electrical, and avionics subsystem, professional engineering publication limited, London, and very recent. This is the uh, okay, books. And any questions, you are always welcome to ask me. This is my email. This is my email. Any questions, you are always welcome. Please be tuned for my next classes also. This is my the third lecture in this aircraft systems and I will be continuing some 65 lectures. Please do with me, be with me and try to learn the things, try to ask the question which is required for you. Thank you very much and I am ending here my session. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.